My name's Tori Proctor, and I am the Kinder Kids, kindergarten all the way through fifth grade STEM teacher at Spencer, Iowa. And um, I teach my kids programming, uh, robotics, a um, little bit about 3D printing. Uh, this year, I introduced them to virtual reality through Google Cardboard. And so um, I ordered Google Cardboard, this kit, online. Um, this one cost me 20 bucks. You can get them for cheaper, I found out possibly even six, six to five bucks. And um, you can also make your own kit. If you Google Google Cardboard, which I like saying, um, they have directions how to make your own kit. And um, the only problem with that is you need to find 40, 45 millimeter lenses. And I haven't done enough research to see where you can get those for cheap to make your own. But um, for 20 bucks, I got a lot of mileage out of this. Um, close to a thousand kids have checked out virtual reality through this. I did disinfect it. Uh, you know, every, every 100 kids or 50 kids or so. Um, but they were pretty wowed. And um, so I showed them virtual reality first through, through Google Cardboard. And um, what you see is a, a still image. Most of them, all of them are still images. And um, you put it on, actually, you need a smartphone. That's the brain of it. And you can download Google Cardboard. Um, that's a free app. And um, smartphone, it can be Android, it can be iPhone. Um, you download that app, and they have some sample images that you can see. And um, I'll show you what the screen sees. Um, this is, oh, I have to change. There is a button on this, and when you touch the button, it changes the image that you look at. And there's also a menu that you can look at. And I want to toggle through here. So we see like one image like we're, we're used to seeing. But this is what the phone projects. Um, it's dual images. And our brain just puts them together as, as one. And so the point of view is from your head. Like wherever you turn, you see a, a room. You know, you see the floor. You see the ceiling. You can't walk in the Google Cardboard app. You can't walk in. You can walk in meet space, the space that we're in right now. But you can't walk in the virtual space in this, in this app. Um, so everyone in this room, I've already, they've already seen it, so they kind of understand what I'm talking about. It's a thing you have to really experience to um, have a deeper appreciation for it and, and understand how it's going to be a big game changer. So with the Google Cardboard app, you can visit different museums around the world. Um, I showed everyone the, the inside of a NASA spaceship hangar with um, a ceiling that was, you know, roughly it looked like it was 20 stories tall. And um, it really feels like you're there. Um, what I've been learning from people that are doing VR and, and making VR headsets and so on is that um, you have to, when you watch regular TV at home on a flat screen, you have to tell yourself that this is real, that whatever story or movie that you're watching. Um, where with virtual reality, you have to, it's the opposite. You have to tell yourself that it's not real. Um, that's kind of such an immersive experience that you get from it. And um, the, one of the creators of the Oculus Rift uses the word presence a lot. You really feel this, this is like my experience. You feel like you're there, wherever place you're visiting. And then when you take it off, um, it still feels like it resonates. You still feel like you're, you're in that place. Um, so it does have educational use, uses, like you can go visit a museum. Um, one of the images in the Google Cardboard app is um, underneath the ocean. Someone took a special 360 camera down underneath water. And then when you look up, you know, you have the, the water surface above you. And there's all sorts of plant life around you. And um, how do you replicate that other than doing the real thing? And this is, I would say this is the closest thing to replicating that, closer than a video game on a flat screen or video footage on a flat screen. So that's Google Cardboard. Um, I did find another great app, and it's um, VRSE is the name of the app, and you can watch videos. So with Google Cardboard, you're just looking at a still image, and you feel like you're in the room, and you look up and you look down. With the Google, the, the Verse app, I don't know if it's Google app, um, things are happening all around you. Um, it could be a news report, which I'll show you an example of on the, the TV screen shortly. Or um, it could be like a movie. There's people already making movies with virtual reality, um, video games, and so on. Um, so that takes, that's a whole other experience. Now you can look in every direction, and then there's stuff moving. Um, there even is, there's a, a computer graphics um, virtual reality 
in this one. So someone's already turned it into a, a CG art form. And you watch that one's trippy. Uh, you feel like you're in nature and it's very photorealistic. And a train starts coming towards you across water. And then the train bursts into birds. And then you look up and the birds are swirling around you and it just, everything's exploding. It's, it's an, it, yeah, it's an intense, it's an intense experience. <clears throat> but, um, so that's some of the uses for it. And it's really a wow factor. Now, um, I would like to show you, I know Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, question? Go ahead. What's in the cardboard besides the lenses, and what's the purpose of the button? Well, the button, um, there are, all there is is lenses, and then there's a space. Um, the lens, lenses are about an inch and a half in, and then there's a space between your phone, and, and that's it. It's just a, a vehicle to hold your phone upright, and you need the lenses. Um, I'm glad that you asked that, because you do have to calibrate it in a way. Um, you, you're supposed to, with the Google Cardboard app, you're supposed to scan this code here, and then I'm sure it's telling the um, app the distance between your phone and um, the lenses. So it's very cheap. All it is is cardboard, Velcro to hold it together. Um, what you really need is the distance figured out and, and have the lenses is all you need. So it's super cheap. And this is a, a it seems like a pretty simple trick. With What's the function system. of the button? The button, um, some of these are interactive. Like um, if I tilt, the, this Google Cardboard app, it leaves, it leaves the image that you're in, and then it takes you to a menu. And I didn't have a chance to show everybody that. My phone's upside down. But, um, so to go to a different place, like if I want to go to exhibit or an urban hike or check out a kaleidoscope, I can turn and select with my head and then confirm my selection by hitting the button on the top. And it's a little piece of material um, right above the bridge of my nose reaches forward and touches the screen. And so it works with the screen. It's not actually a cardboard piece right there. Thank you. So that's, that's all. It's worth 20 bucks. I'd rather spend 20 bucks than have to find the lenses and create a button that pops this, touches the screen. Yes? So that Google Cardboard you have there fits your iPhone 6 Plus perfectly. Um, let's say you just have regular iPhone 6. Does it, is it a different size? Uh, Google Cardboard, or is it the same size and the phone just fits in it? I did have to do some research. Um, when I Googled Google Cardboard, they had a whole bunch of um, options. And I don't know if you want to pan or show the video later. Oh, it has that too. Um, so I clicked on these, and I just had to read and see what the, the size are for. And this one had like a, a size range between 5 and 6 and a half inches or something like that. I don't quite remember the, the exact details. So this wasn't made just for an iPhone especially like mine. It'll probably work great with an Android, but um, this one's just a little taller to fit taller phones. Um, you know, you don't want, you probably don't want a small phone in this because it'll more easily slide out. So yeah, you do have to do a little research. You just can't grab any Google Cardboard and, and expect it to fit the, the size of phone that you have. But, so um, yeah, that's Google Cardboard. Um, now, I know, um, Mark Zuckerberg has like invested $2 billion into Oculus Rift, and he wants to bring virtual reality to Facebook. And he's already, you can kind of already see that I looked it up on Facebook. Um, this is a news report, ABC News. And um, you can hear the news reporter talking. But with this one, I can click and drag. This is not quite virtual reality yet. But if you can imagine, you might be able to start doing virtual reality from Facebook. I know that's where he's heading, heading. So you can drag this all the way around, and that's a live video feed. You can look at the ceiling. You can look all around. So it's going to change news, how we watch news. Um, I mean, that's a big game change. It's going to change education and how we, we view, also entertainment, how we view movies, how we play video games. Um, so this is Oculus Rift, and this is the big um, feature and reached big brother of Google Cardboard, and uh, with this one, you can play video games, and you'll be able to um, control moving through. You can be able to actually move through a small space if you want to. And there's a hand gesture um, controllers where it actually, there's, there's a ring on this uh, controller that they have for it. 
what I've read is that this, this controller can sense the location of your fingers in space. Um, so there's sensors around the ring. So wherever you move your fingers, they can be represented in a video game. So for example, if you're playing a video game where you're a robot and you hold out your hands in front of you, they could, a digital artist could make a robot you know, arm and hand and impression. And you can look forward and you can be looking at a robotic hand and not just you know, your hands, which you can't see anyway because it's, there's, you can't see through virtual reality. But um, that's another big thing. Um, they figured out how to play sports with these table tennis. Um, if you can imagine playing ten table tennis with someone else. So they figured out how to catch and throw. So they're already figuring out physics so you can play virtual reality sports in VR. Um, this, I, I show this to my students, this video, because um, this is a, a use for art in virtual reality. It's a combination of both. And um, with this virtual reality headset and their setup, you can actually walk in the space and you can draw in the space. And so it, it's change, it can change art very well. This is unlike school, where school I teach the same thing over maybe eight times. And the first one's all sloppy, and the second time I, I present, I'm smooth. So I'm, I'm missing that right now. When you draw, you're expressing something that's real and visceral. By making a line, it's sort of a seismograph of your soul. I was at Disney for about 38 years and was given an opportunity to animate Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Tarzan, Pocahontas. These are not drawings. These are real characters as they exist in my own life. Picasso said, when I was young, I could draw and paint like Raphael. It's taken me a lifetime to learn to draw like a child. An artist's spirit is that freedom and fearlessness of being a child. I was planted in the perfect nest to grow up in. My dad was a cartoonist who created the family circus. He was a kid. He was just like a big kid. When my son Max was just a little guy, he said, Dad, teach me to draw. I taught him the same way my dad did. Dad drew circles and then wrote expressions under each one. Within like a half hour, he came back and they were all filled out. Afraid, the eyes are looking in two different directions as if like, Ooh. The key to doing those drawings was asking himself, so how do I feel? That's the thing that you gotta hang on to, that full immersion into the drawing. When I animate, there's a frustration that I have, wishing that the flatness of the paper would go away and that I could actually dive in. Animating the beast, I became the beast. I remember going home at night and my jaw just hurting because beast all day, he's talking like this, and my back is all bent over and my neck was sore and because I'm, I'm, I'm being him. I would draw not to do a drawing, but so that I could step in and live in that world. Today, all the rules have changed. By putting tools in your hand that can create in virtual reality, I can put goggles on and I just step into the paper and now I'm drawing in it. North, south, east, west, all directions are open now. Just immersing myself in space is more like a dance. What is this amazing new world I just stepped into? When I draw in virtual reality, I draw all the characters real life size. They are that size in my imagination. The character can turn. Ariel is actually turning in space. And even if you take the goggles off, I'm still remembering, she's right there. It's real.
that doorway to the imagination is open a little wider. The edges of the paper are no longer there. This is not a flat drawing. This is a sculptural drawing. Making art in three-dimensional space is an entirely new way of thinking for any artist. What does this mean for storytelling? I love the idea as an animator that you can be anything that you can imagine. And as a kid, you're completely free. The soul of any kind of a creative art form is the freedom. So, um, yeah, I try to really wow the kids and get excited about VR. Um, I leave them with, with a thought. And, like, I ask them how many of them play Minecraft. And um, the older the elementary kids are, the more kids play Minecraft. Um, I think 24 out of 25 kids out of two fifth grade classes that I asked have played Minecraft before. And then, then I had them ask them, imagine this if, if Minecraft was, was virtual reality. And um, you're inside of the game and you're mining and, and fighting off um, creepers and whatnot. And, um, and, I, and then I tell them they, they've, they're making it. Um, they, they really are, so Minecraft for virtual reality. And then, then the kids have to leave, and that's like the last 10 seconds of class, and then they go down the hall and they're all buzzing about virtual reality and they want to play virtual reality Minecraft. So I leave them, leave, I kind of wow them in the beginning and leave them on a high note. And um, so they'll understand like in a couple of months or half a year or a year down the road, if they have an older brother or a parent that has this headset on and they're in another world, they'll have like some understanding of what's going on. Um, that's the world that you know they're going to live in. So I'm just kind of preparing them for that. And it's, it's pretty exciting and, and it seems magical stuff. So that's my presentation on Google Cardboard, kind of a with itness presentation and um, virtual reality. All right, thanks.